is probably what this work is about most of all. That's why I tend to call the medium immersive virtual space to put the emphasis on the spatiality. Normally in our everyday life we experience space in a very specific way where uh, we have a flat surface, it's a horizon, we're gravity bound and it's full of hard-edged objects and we perceive the space as empty. One of my main goals in this work was to begin to dissolve that, that those boundaries, dissolve that idea of separation between the, the self and all those separate objects and chose to do this by working with an aesthet a visual aesthetic or a visual style based on trans semi-transparency and ambiguity. This visual aesthetic was an attempt to get past the conventional style in 3D computer graphics and VR of hard-edged objects. And by allowing people to see through and flow through, it's as if their perceptions of space become heightened. It makes them pay more attention to their experience of being in that space, and that's, that was one of my goals. It's really allowing you to experience in a very bodily, corporeal, subjective way my vision of what it means to be in the world. This uh, vest that they're putting on right now is the vest that's used to measure the expansion and contraction of the chest. We use that as part of the navigation, because if you fill up your chest with air, you'll float up through the space. And if you empty your chest, you'll float down through the space. Diving has informed the work in that in oceanic space, one feels enveloped, basically gravity-free. And also when you're diving, the way that you would move through such a space is through breath and balance. People enter the work through an introductory Cartesian grid, and then uh, they tend to drop through that grid down into a central clearing. Under the clearing is a subterranean earth with roots and rocks. Above the clearing is, uh, we call it ciel in, in French in terms of cloud. Inside the clearing there's a pond which you can enter and go down into a, a metaphorical abyss and then cycle up through a life world back into the clearing. And then around these worlds, you have a substratum, which is software code. And then at, above is a world of text, which consists of uh, excerpts from various writers, philosophers, poets, etc., who have informed the work and basically kept me company over the last 10 or 15 years or so while I was working out these uh, ideas. Some people might want to stay in Osmos forever, and we do bring in an ending that very gently suggests to them that their, their passage within Osmos is coming to an end. We often see people reaching up to the ceiling and saying, come back, don't leave me. You really relaxed. When I came out, I said, God, I feel as I've just had a massage, you know? It was just like really relaxing. You can concentrate on your breathing as you're going up and down. Oh, it was a lovely feeling and, you know, it's, it's, it's amazing. It's just really, what's the word, futuristic. Oh, there was uh, lots of words. And then there was the uh, nice scenery with the leaves. The music was nice, soothing. Yes, it was very nice. You might think that this is a very uh, frightening, terrifying attempt to replace real nature as an artificial one inside a computer so people can just hook up, plug in, and forget what's going on in the real world. That's not my intent. I know this type of work and, and, and this medium can be used and will probably be used as a kind of a drug to distract people from the, the conditions of their own lives. But by being in that virtual space, they will feel more connected to their own life and they'll feel more, more aware of their own mortality so that perhaps it'll send them back out there rather than make them want to stay inside this virtual space. <laughs>